Hello all, in this video we're going to look at competitive ELISAs and how you should analyze that kind of data. Now competitive ELISAs may also be referred to as inhibition ELISA and these are plate-based assays or surface-based assays where the plate is coated with the capture antibody against your target of interest in your sample. So the plate already contains a capture antibody and so you introduce your sample and you are able to get detection at that point. So it's apparent it, the capture antibody is already on the 96 well plate or however many wells you have on your plate. Then you introduce a sample which contains the analyte that you are aiming to measure. Since the detection antibody is already on the plate, you follow up with a conjugated antigen. That's the same as the antigen you are measuring in your sample. The more antigen that you have present in your sample, that's, that's already been detected by the capture antibody, the less of the conjugated antigen will bind to the capture antibody that's already on the plate. Brilliant. So then you add a substrate and you go to a plate reader, get your measurement. So how do you analyze such data? By the way, this kind of ELISA is like, why would you do this reverse system? Well, apparently this kind of ELISA, according to an R&D systems article, is used when the protein of interest is actually too small to allow you to efficiently sandwich it between two antibodies. So let's take a look at the plate layout where we've gone ahead and measured an analyte of interest via a competitive assay. So what you can see here is I've got 0 0.072, 0 0.174, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. What you can see is that I've got lower absorbs, ab absorbance values for my higher standards. And normally your higher standards would have your higher standards would have a higher absorption value absorbance value than your lower one so it's inverted right and then you've got your over here from three to ten are my unknown samples and one to two are my standards because this data is inverted we go ahead and take the inverse of the absorbance readings for the standards and the samples so what's how do you take an inverse the inverse is taken by doing one divided by the absorbance readings. So for example, if the absorbance readings of the top standard is 0.06 and the replicate of the first replicate is 0.06 and the second one is 0.05, then the inverse will be very simple, one divided by 0.06 and the other replicate will be one divided by 0.05. You repeat the process for all the data points. So what you end up receiving is finally my standard one having higher absorbance readings than my lower one. So if you look at standard one, I've got 12.5 and this replicate was 4.28. Uh, the second standard was 5.34, its replicate was 5.49. The third, as you can see, it's accurately reflecting the top, the higher concentration standards. So then the next thing you do is what you do for any ELISA. We've got concentrations for the standard curve. We've got, we've got, sorry, we haven't got concentrations at this point. We've only got absorbance readings for the standard curve and absorbance readings for the unknowns or our samples. So we're gonna go ahead and use a tool that allows us to plot a graph in order to read off the concentration of our samples, which are referred to as unknowns. Now, I've previously shown you an Arigo Gain Data ELISA calculator software that's freely available for you to use. And I will link the video here if you want more details on how to use that particular software and how to go about setting it all up. But basically, you go ahead and you, you paste your data for your absorbents and for your unknown or samples. You do a curve fit and the recommended curve fit is the four parameter logistic. Again, I have a video here on why that fit is usually recommended. So you can go ahead and have a look at it. So you get a line of best fit to make sure the ASCO value is close to one, which reflects a, a decent fit that is reliable for you in order for you to determine what your sample concentrations are. And then that's it. You have now been able to 
accurately determine what concentrations are in your samples based on the standard curve, even though it was a competitive ELISA. So it's important to check that the absorbance readings for the samples are within the ranges of the standard curve. Obviously, if the absorbance readings fall, fall below or outside, then you're not, um, the concentrations you're reporting will not be accurate. And in that case, you will have to either dilute or concentrate depending on whether the sample was too high or too low. Or if you diluted the sample quite high before you ran it in the assay, then you can just uh, now assay it neat, as in undiluted. Okay, so now over to you. What analyte are you measuring at present in your assay? I'd love to know in the comments. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. God bless you. Bye.